If you haven't watched the video on my main channel where I am in Italy together with Peter, then you probably should head over there and watch that video first so that you know why the coming footage and interview is looking like it's completely out of focus. But just to give you a quick explanation, I dropped this lens into the ground a while back and as I was doing the interview together with Peter, my lens did not work as expected. But for those of you that enjoy listening to the audio and maybe just want to hang out with us, grab a whiskey, a little bit of uh, chips and uh, other good stuff, maybe a beer sausage or whatever you can find, va? And just hang out because this is me and Peter just having whiskey 10 a.m. in Italy. Question, do you have a knife? I don't have anything. Okay. I'm gonna make something that will annoy you. I'm gonna bring up the keychain. Oh, that's end of video. That's terrible. Why, like, first of all, like, what is this? <laughs> like, what, what century is this from? That, that's the key to my dad's workshop. Is your dad the Count of Monte Cristo? <laughs> Why, like, what are all these? That's like tags from my apartment. We have Allen keys on here. What is Can't, this? That is their studio. That's your studio key? Yes. It's like one of those feelings when you just put in the key and you're like... Oh, that's offensive. <laughs> Where do you keep that? Is that, you keep it in your pocket? Yeah, all the time. Like in your front pocket? Yeah. In your front pocket? Yes. I gotta try it. <laughs> That's where you keep it. Yeah. Oh my, dude, no chance. <laughs> you don't like it? You're a warden. What prison do you work for? Alcatraz. Have <laughs> oh, you been there? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've been there too. Yeah? You know what's crazy? I ran into a friend in Alcatraz. That's I was weird. shooting stuff, we bumped into each other, and I was like, <gasps> Dan! And he's like, yo! I'm like, of all the places! <laughs> yeah, that's a true story. Do you think it's as big as it looks in movies? Because I felt it was smaller. Way smaller. Yeah. Did you go upstairs? I don't think so. So it was roped off when I went. Yeah. And all I did is walked over and un unclipped the rope. And then I just mingled back into the people. <laughs> and I let other people start going up because it was no longer roped up. And then I was like, oh, what's up here? Everyone's going upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Best technique yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. Have you tried this one? I have a bottle at home, yeah. but I have not yet opened it. This, this is how we're going to do it. Is there not like a little pull tab? Not on this one. Is it, this, like, or is it like 10 a.m. right now? Yeah. <laughs> this is a strong one though. What makes it strong? It is almost 60%. Oh, okay. but good morning. <laughs> the thing is it doesn't taste like 60%. And it is, this is one of my favorite whiskeys, by the way. It okay. is a single malt, Speyside, aged for like, I think it's 12 years. It is sherry cask. Sherry cask whiskeys taste Ch so- Cherry? Sherry, like sherry, the wine stuff. Sherry, sherry. Sherry, sherry, sherry. Okay. <laughs> That's a specific wine that I have in Spain. Sure, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I believe you. Taste it. Cheers. Cheers Does it taste 60%? No. No. No, like 43. Do you like it? Yeah, it's sweet. It is. It's really sweet. Very, very sweet. And the aftertaste. Oh, that's warming me right up. I can feel it just. <laughs> it's like just taking over the whole. That's great. So good. Yeah. One of the things that have fascinated me, me lately with you is your separate channel. Yeah, I haven't talked about it yet, really. No, it's, it's like one of those. We've been discussing this uh, for the last two months, something. Yeah, well, I made the channel a year ago. Yeah. Like almost to the day. Yeah. Like April 25th or something. Why? I have that Instagram account, Pete's Pirate Life. Yeah. And it's kind of like, it's still me, but it's another side of me with just interests that don't really align with photography. It's everyday carry, it's dirt bikes, it's quads, it's mud, it's outdoors, campfires, whiskey, uh, stuff that I love and I could probably force into the fold that is the Peter McKinnon brand, but it, it just, it's very separate and I, and okay, I wanted so to keep it separate. How did you start that? Peace for Life. So I yeah. used to run a leather goods business yeah. called Montgomery Leather Works. And I, before YouTube, made belts and wallets and bags and accessories and beard oil and it's like all that kind of stuff. And I loved photographing it because I love, love product photography. So it, it was just like such a cool, rich, like when you open that account, like you could taste it, you could smell it. It gave off like a, I hate the word vibe because it's trendy right now, but it did very <laughs> much give off this feeling, this aura, this, and I loved that. 
and it got to like 30,000 followers. And after I decided to close down the business, I just deleted the account. I was like, well, I don't need this anymore. So that sucks. Like all this hard work <laughs> and I deleted it and I regretted it for like for years. Cause I was like, I could have just, I could have just kept going. Cause like, I still like photography. I don't, it doesn't have to just be leather goods. I could still shoot whiskey or go camping or, or make a fire somewhere and ride dirt. Like I could still do that. So it wasn't until years later that I decided like, I'm, I'm going to do that again. I'm just going to start another account. Uh, I'm going to call it Pete's pirate life that came to life because a lot of my close friends just call me a pirate. So they're like, dude, you're tattooed, drink whiskey, long hair, you swear. And like off camera, <laughs> I swear, I swear a lot, but for someone that doesn't swear, I guess I swear a lot. And he's like, you're like a real life pirate. So I was trying to get like pirate Pete or like Petey the pirate or pirate Petey and everything was taken, but Pete's pirate life wasn't. So I just, I just chose it. And then I got like a little logo made and the rest is history. And, and, and it gave me that outlet to shoot the same stuff again uh, with new equipment, with better equipment. Uh, and, and it just became, originally no one knew it was me, it was anonymous. Then I kept tattooing my hands and then I kind of, I kind of blew it. <laughs> yeah. From that, like the channel, Pete's Pirate Life kind of developed. Yeah. So I thought to myself, after the account got successful and people started finding it, I was having so much fun with it. I, I kept thinking because I'm a YouTuber, that's what I do. Like, what would a channel look like? Like, what would it feel like? What would it be? Like, it would probably be dirt bikes. It would probably be moto. It would probably be product photography. I could talk about how I run Pete's Pirate Life. I could talk about the marketing tactics. I could talk about the products that we make and, and the revisions that we go through and prototyping and stuff like that. And it could also just be me talking about a flashlight for 15 minutes. Now I could do that on Peter McKinnon main channel but people go to that channel because they know me as the photo video guy and they would tolerate the flashlight video maybe because they like my personality but it's not what they're coming for i love marquez yeah i'm not going to marquez's channel to learn how to make pancakes or something <laughs> i would watch it because i like marquez but if yeah. he kept making cooking tutorials i would start to think like what's going on here yeah so I felt like I needed to separate them. So I made that separate channel, but I didn't post anything because I got so wrapped up into how I could make it different. Yeah. What's the, what's the new vibe gonna be? Do I edit these different? Is it all black and white? Is there no music? Like what's the thing? And I, and I just let that be the deterrent to not move forward. And that stalled me for like a year. There's an airplane. Airplane break. Oh. So a year later, you started posting onto that channel. Like, like two weeks ago. Yeah. That is like yeah. almost right now. Yeah. You started yeah. it. Yeah. How does it feel though to have the different outlets? It's funny what it's done. I, and I never expected it. I would have done it sooner if I knew how it would make me feel. There's like a very vivid clarity that I feel now and like a permission to do photo video again. I think because my interests were, they're not separating, but they're very different. I love photo and video and I love all the other stuff but they just weren't, you can't meld them together very well. And some people would disagree with that. And like, well, you could go ride a dirt bike and talk about cameras, but I would rather make a video talking about cameras and a video riding a dirt bike. And I feel like both audiences would appreciate my full attention on both of those. Yeah, and then like, if, if you make a video, like you said, like riding a dirt bike, but talking about the camera, it's kind of disguising the video to something that it shouldn't be. I agree. That's that's why I think like splitting them is was the move. But in doing so, now I'm like, okay, well, that's great because like now all that stuff just goes there. And this is just, I'm the photo video guy again. Like I felt like, I don't know, maybe I felt like I left a little bit or yeah. I was trying to make this world work in this world. And that was hard for me for like a year plus. I was like, what, like, what am I, what am I doing? And now I know what I'm doing. It's like that world exists and this world exists. I, mean, I can still have fun. I can still vlog. I can still do what I normally do, but I have a place now for the flashlight video. I have a, I should make that. <laughs> I have a place to ride through a swamp. I have a place to, to foster that creativity that is very specific and targeted without having to pollute the waters that this community has come to know me by. Yeah, and for someone that has been doing, I would say, infotainment videos. Sure, yeah. For a long time, it's gonna be inevitable that you get tired of it, doing the same thing over yeah. and over. Yeah. And I can feel the same. I've been doing this since 2018. You were the inspiration for me, and then you make all those videos. You start like crunching out the videos, two, three videos a week. A week that yeah. is focused on the 
hobby yeah. that you love, and then all of a sudden it's like I need to do something differently. Yeah, Otherwise, dude, this is gonna get choked. Yeah, it becomes a grind, and I get that. Like work is work sometimes. Of like course. it's like it's sometimes it's great and it's fun, and sometimes it it's it's a job and you just have to do it. But it started feeling more like one side was heavier than the other, and it was more of a grind than it was I was enjoying it. And it was because I was like, I'm the photo guy, I'm the video guy. I have to stick to that. It's all I can do. But I want to do some of these things. I'm like, but they don't fit. So splitting them up really just lifted a weight off my shoulders and just like it, it like everything just made sense. And I've only done three videos, but like it's the <laughs> mindset. It's like now I know where things go. I don't have to air traffic control as much. I don't have to try to weave storylines into things that don't need storylines woven into them. And it's just that not being in my head anymore is just so liberating. It's just about like recording. It's so, and you thing. know what's funny yeah. dude, like I, I w I've spoken all over the world and we would always do a Q and A session at the end of a talk. And one of the questions I, I got so many times was like, what do you feel about like different niches or different avenues? Like, should they all live in one place? Should you make different channels? And I was always like, don't make another channel. <laughs> and I always use this example. I was like, you are like, you are an umbrella. And everything under that umbrella that like that you like, that's you. That's what makes you you. So just stay under the umbrella. You don't need to start popping up new ones. And I was the guy telling everybody not to do it. And I would fully reverse it now. I would fully be the guy being like, no, you should make another channel. For me, it's been like with the vlog channel, kind of the same thing because the outlet of just making a video because I enjoy making a video without trying to hide it, like beneath the camera thing or tutorial or anything that is related to what I should like, don't talk about the settings, don't talk about nothing. Yeah. Just recording yeah. for the sake of like using what I've learned and what. Yeah. And I feel like it's, it's really uh, sparked like my creativity again. Like it's really got me thinking differently about videos, but, but also reminiscent of how I used to think about them in 2017, which all the comments are basically like, this is like old school pee. Now I got to make sure that like that vibe, I hate that word. <laughs> isn't lost on the main channel because like I still care, like I care about that channel more. Of course. It's everything I've worked so hard for. Like I've yeah. poured every blood, sweat and tears into that channel. I will not let it just go by the wayside, but getting that spark back for making things feels so good. If you watch yourself with two channels, where you're at right now, what's the, what's what's your vision? Well, like the, the exciting like, thing now is like, like I said, I can just ride through a swamp without having to make it a teachable moment. <laughs> and I'm very excited about that. But like the plan is, I, and I get asked that all the time, like, what's your plan? What's the future? I've done so much more than I ever already planned to. And I'm so blessed and so grateful for where I've been able to get to and the people and places and the career. I just want to be able to keep doing it. Like yeah. the plan is to just keep making videos and keep having fun and, and not lose sight of why I love making them. Because when you lose sight of it and the spark is gone and you can't find it and you're looking for it, it really sucks. It does. It really, and I just don't <laughs> want that to happen again. It's like the creative struggle is for someone who lives, eats, breathes art. When you can't find it, or you have that block or you're, it's, it's excruciating and it's tiring and it's exhausting. So doing whatever I can, even if it's just right down to eating healthy or exercising to keep your mind clear like I just all of the things so that I can like maintain what I love talking about that you started work out I started working out yeah yeah I did I have a trainer um, I stopped eating bad like I stopped eating fast food I stopped drinking beer and within like a month and a half I lost 30 pounds Wow. Last summer, yeah, my, my face was huge. And you look back in photos, it's like, wow. There's gonna be like this summer, people are not gonna see the difference oh, between us. This, <laughs> yeah, this summer, dude, <laughs> Peter, like which one? Like the, the one that works out, like which one? It's yeah. like, look at this, Your guys. arms are literally bigger than my thighs though. My I, thigh yeah, I think is they smaller are. than your bicep, <laughs> which is hilarious. How do you, are you every day? Like right now? Yeah. It's like three. It's Tops. like three. If I did three times a week, I would be so like, I oh, did come it. On. I could never do like, that's, that's, that's a lot. You gotta love it though, right? And like, I don't know oh, if yeah. it's one of those things that like repetition brings results which fuel your desire to keep progressing. I've just never gotten to the point where I felt that or seen it. So I just have no interest. No, but I think you can, in your case, you can kind of like stitch that together with your like dedication to make YouTube videos. See that, that could go on the pirate channel. Yeah. Yeah that kind of thing. Going to the gym, it's about showing up. Like the, you're not gonna have the results unless you get there. And that's the same with YouTube, everything that we talked about. Yeah, consistency, the video yeah. you made, all that stuff. Yeah, dude, dude's really <laughs> serious about consistency. <laughs>
Yeah. I am honored to be here with you. Well, hey, thanks for inspiring me to actually get the second channel going because I probably wouldn't, you got to drink after you cheers, right? (laughs) I probably wouldn't have started it without your push because it's been there for a year and seeing your second vlog channel and we've been talking for a while now, your encouragement to just get it going and get out of my own way uh, was a big reason as, as to why I've now felt this like lighter, freer, more creative version of myself. So I do, I do owe a lot of this to you. So thank you for in a way helping uh, unburden my creative mind. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Goes, goes full circle, right? It does. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. It's like 10 30 AM. bro. I'm (laughs) dying. (laughs) I just had espresso. And now I'm having whiskey. But it's good. And my stomach is hating me. (laughs) And it burns. It burns. Like you can feel the 60%. I'm trying like, you know, like the whiskey face. Yeah. I'm trying my best to hide it. This one, it's like, ah, you gotta do it. You gotta do this. It's still burning. Oh, oh come on. We gotta have another one. This, this is just the first one. We're gonna finish the bottle today. Bro, I just, I just bent, I don't need it anymore. I just bent over and I feel like it came. Do oh. you ever just think to yourself like, I'm sitting at a villa on Lake Como, having whiskey with Peter. Yeah. You know, the last two days, I've been thinking that every single minute. I'm sitting here. I figured it too. It doesn't wear off. Like, no, I, it doesn't I, make I, sense. I think, I think people probably expect that you get used to this when you get these opportunities a lot, but you really never do. It's like I. It's almost like I just don't believe that it's happening. No, and then w- when you get home, everything is like. That was a dream, bro. And you're telling someone about it in the way you're sounding. You're like, oh, we're at this thick. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I really didn't mean Like, it's just, I don't even believe it myself. I look at the photos on my phone. I take so many pictures with my phone. Oh, yeah. So, like, just bad pictures because I love them. Like, like this picture of us last night. Yeah. Throw it up on the screen here. Like, it, that, I love those types of photos. It's those so, are my favorites. Like, the memories are so good when you capture yeah. it in the moment. Yeah. That, that means a lot more than having a bang on Instagram. Yeah, speaking on that for two seconds, I have been trying to finish this documentary forever and everyone knows at this point. It's gonna be like two minute Tuesday soon. <laughs> and I took a picture of Tom DeLong in the back of a dive venue in Dallas, Texas or something. And he was with his wife. It was just like a really quick phone shot, horrible lighting. It looked cool. And then like months later, he was like, we have that framed in our house and it's our favorite, favorite photo. I was like, why though? Like, it's so bad. He's like, it's not about the quality or lack of pixels or bad lighting, but like, it was her first time on tour with me for this tour and like, they hadn't experienced this together. And he's like, you just captured it all. And like, like the background of like, the, the, the story of the photo means so much to us. And the fact that it's captured and it exists is just why we love it. And it's not about the camera. It's not about the resolution. It's not about like, I hate the gear doesn't matter and all those conversations, they suck. I just think like, gear doesn't matter. Let's talk about that. I'm like, pick better topics, <laughs> who cares? But like this horrible, grainy, pasty, it doesn't even look like pixels. Like it's barely make out his face, you zoom in. You're like, you know it's him, but like, just cause you know it's him. And it's his favorite photo. And I have taken the most sick photos of this guy on stage, just rocking out with his guitar in the air smoke, lights, lasers, <laughs> like every photographic tool in my bucket that I can possess and throw at this, I have done and sent him the most ridiculous stuff. And the most shitty photo from my phone is what he loves the most of everything I've ever done for him. And I love that. That's awesome. I love that, that's cool. Like when oh. we think of this trip, we won't think of this view. No. We'll think of that photo. Yeah, and for I sure. That. It's like two hour conversation, whiskey yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. Pitch black out there, like just, just like hearing the sound of the water, just slowly moving on the shore. Lights in the distance, reflections. Still, the air was just dead. We're on this balcony. These French doors were open. The glasses were just cold enough from like the nighttime air. So good. It's a you should write a book. Yeah, you should. I would love to write a book. Are you going to? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Now, start. Be right back. Got a book to write. <laughs>